And today we're gonna to talk about traditional Chinese painting. We have a lot of examples of this at our house. As you all know, Bailey, my daughter, is adopted from South Korea. And a few years ago, there was an American teacher living in South Korea who sent her a care package, a love package. Now, we did not know this teacher. We had never met him. He was kind of a friend of a friend, but he was an American teaching English at a school in Seoul, South Korea. And he um, heard about Bailey and so graciously in such a sweet gesture, he went to the National Museum of Korea um, gift shop and just loaded up and brought her tons of stuff, sent her tons of stuff. So I'm gonna show you some things today that he sent her because um, they are in the style of the traditional Chinese painting that we're gonna be talking about today. This is just a, a pencil case um, with some beautiful decoration on the outside and then even the pencils on the inside are, are decorated. And the eraser, here's another pencil box. Of course, this one's my favorite because I love the color in it. I love the beautiful soft colors. Um, I have it upside down, I think. Nope. I guess it does go like that. And then a, <laughs> it's kind of funny, a mouse pad, but it just shows an example of um, the artwork that we're going to be talking about today. And then lastly, we have um, a traditional fan that opens up, that has that beautiful, beautiful artwork on it. Beautiful colors. So, you see this style of um, painting on lots of items. It's not just on paper or silk or canvas. I have a scarf, <laughs> a silk scarf that has some um, Chinese painting on it. I should have brought that out also. Um, it is on notepads, it is on book covers, it is on calendars, it is absolutely everywhere. So I'm sure you have seen it. It is a very specific style of painting. It is not something that is easily mistaken for something else. I don't know if you can see this. I'm gonna hold it a little bit closer so you can see this one. The, tra the traditional Chinese painting is, it's a very interesting um, phenomenon <laughs> because it started, um, you know, hundreds of years ago and artists are still painting in this style. And the artists who paint in this style are very much linked to the past. They study past artworks. They study history. They study artists from, you know, the Tang Dynasty. They study all of these things and then they mimic that style in their artwork, which makes it a little bit confusing for people because just to look at a piece of, of artwork done in this style, you don't know if it was painted in 600 AD or if it was painted in 2019. They mimic that style. They do not follow traditions, or not traditions, they do follow traditions. They do not follow trends. They want everything to be linked to the past. So it's kind of interesting. Um, there's a lady, Elizabeth Hamer, who works as the head of Chinese paintings at the Christie's Auction House in New York City. She said one time that when you have a traditional Chinese painting and you are trying to authenticate that. She said, you can have five experts in a room and they will come up with seven different opinions about these paintings because it is so difficult to distinguish the older works from the more current works. Um, they have to do all kinds of scientific things on these paintings to determine how old they really are. So whether a Chinese artist is purposefully trying to copy an exact work or not, they are still so closely linked together that it's hard to distinguish the past from the present, which I think is very, very interesting. Chinese traditional painters learn their craft, like I said, from copying 
previous works. They use something called um, color, color. They don't call it watercolor. They just call it color. So when you see a traditional painting in a museum, you'll see a little card beside it. It will have the name of the artist and the year, um, the substrate that was used, paper or silk or canvas. And then it will say, usually say ink and color. Now what that color is, is actually a water-based color. So today on our paintings, we are going to use watercolor and we are going to um, paint a traditional artwork. Now, if you look at this one, I hope it's not too dark. I hope you can see this. Okay. If you look at this one, it is a landscape. Most of these traditional Chinese paintings are either landscapes or flowers. And the color in it is very muted. It is not bright red and bright green and a bright primary yellow. They are very muted. So we're going to be working with some muted colors today. Not quite a monochromatic color scheme, but pretty close to a monochromatic, meaning using only one color, different shades of one color. We are going to add in um, some blue and some gray to ours like this one has, but it's still pretty subdued. This painting, the title of it, the English translation of the title is Sailboats and Pavilion. It was painted sometime um, in the late 600s, early 700s during the Tang Dynasty. In fact, the artist who painted this um, was part of that dynasty. He was somehow related to that family. His name was Li Sigzon, and he painted this using ink and color, like I talked about, and he painted this on silk. The paintings that are done on silk are so beautiful. They have a different quality to them than the paintings that are, that are done on parchment or on paper or canvas. So today you are going to need, out of your art supplies, a piece of watercolor paper, your watercolors, and paintbrush, of course, and your white crayon. I'm using oil pastel because I don't have any white crayons in the house right now and a jar of water. And then you may wanna keep handy um, a rag next to you. I know I save all of my um, dish towels that have seen better days. This one's got a big hole in it. I save these for paint rags. I've got a box of them that I keep in my studio. So that's what you're gonna to need today. So go ahead and pause it for a second and come back when you have your supplies gathered. Okay, we're gonna be working on a technique today called watercolor resist. There's several different things you can use um, to create a resist. You can use a crayon or an oil pastel like I'm gonna be using today. However, my favorite thing to use for watercolor resist that I use a lot in my own artwork is a piece of a candle. I know this sounds strange. <laughs> But I buy the long, skinny, tapered candles at Hobby Lobby. I put them in a sack and I beat them with a hammer until they are broken up into little pieces like this. And then I just keep a jar um, nearby of broken pieces of candle wax. And I use this for my resist. It, when you use a crayon or an oil pastel, you get a real thick coating on your page of the... Um, of the wax or the oil and I like it to be a little bit thinner and so the candle gives just a little bit thinner of a coating um, but today I'm going to use an oil pastel like I said my white crayons have disappeared so actually what I'm going to do first though is I'm going to use a different color pastel I'm going to use green to do the resist to start off with so that you can see it on the paper so you can see what I'm drawing because if I use white on white paper you're not going to be able to see it now when you're doing this at home and you're using white on white paper it's going to be a little tricky for you to see it so what you need to do is get in some good light and you may need to tilt it around a little bit as you're as you're working draw a little bit and tilt it so that you can kind of see where your pastel is going so to start off with, and again, I'm using green, you're gonna use white. I'm going to put a sun up here, a circle, and then color that in really, really good.
like so. And then underneath that sun, I'm gonna come down a couple of inches and I'm just going to go across like this. Now what this is going to be is a reflection in the water. So a little bit skinnier here at the top, kind of zigzags, but eventually gets wider as it comes down here to the bottom, okay? So there it is. Okay, now that I have my white on there, my white um, oil pastel, I'm gonna start adding color. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to follow the horizon line and make just some little gentle hills. I'm going to do this using um, a little bit of brown, and then I may mix in a little, a little blue with that. We'll see how it goes. I'm gonna start off there with brown. Now kind of tilt it and see where the top of that reflection is because that's where your horizon line is gonna be. Okay, so now we've established that horizon line. And we're just gonna really gently with the watercolor add some gently sloping hills. Like that. Those are not quite as dark as I would like them to be. So I'm gonna add some blue actually to start off with. Adding a little bit of blue to darken that brown up. And then a tiny bit of black. What we're working here towards is kind of just a nondescript color. We want this just to be a dark, a dark shade of a mystery color. some more blue. Now some more brown. I'm just going to keep going until I like it. Sometimes it's hard to know when to stop. Okay, I'm going to stop there. And I want you to stop there too. Let's stop and let these dry for a little while and then we're gonna come back and do the sky and the water and some trees and the shoreline down here. So take a break, go get a snack or something and I'll see you back here in a second after it dries.